Good evening everyone. Myself Deeman, I am studying in third year MBBS. Today in this ENT lecture, we are going to discuss about the topic called as deviated nasal septum. So, this topic DNS we are going to discuss under the following headings. Etiology, types of deviated nasal septum, clinical features of DNS and finally the treatment for the DNS. Okay, let's begin with our discussion. Deviated nasal septum is the most common cause of the nasal obstruction and there are many of the etiologies for deviated nasal septum as I have listed here. That is one is trauma and the second one is due to improper development and the next one is due to racial factors and finally the hereditary factors. Okay, we will go in detail about the etiology of the DNS. Coming to the trauma. Trauma is most commonly caused due to the lateral blow to the nose in case of domestic violence which causes the deviation of the nasal septum. Other than that, coming to the congenital cases during the passage of the baby in the birth canal due to the congested space in the birth canal, the nose may get compressed to the lateral wall of the birth canal and there may be deviation of the nasal septum. Okay, now we will discuss about how improper development causes DNS. Yes, improper development between the palate and the base of the skull may cause deviation of the nasal septum. And also in case of adenoid hypertrophy, due to high arch palate, as I have discussed in the following diagram, there may be buckling of the nasal septum which causes the DNS, as I have shown in this diagram. Next coming to the racial factors. Caucasian people, that is European peoples are more affected for the DNS and finally the hereditary factors. Yes, the astonishing thing that DNS runs in the family and it is reported in the most of the cases. Okay, now let's discuss about types of deviated nasal septum. There are mainly five types of deviated nasal septum as I have listed here. That is the first one is anterior dislocation. The second one is C-shaped deflection. The next one is S-shaped deflection. The fourth one is a nasal spur. And last but not the least, that is thickening of the nasal septum. I will explain in detail what exactly these types of deviated nasal septum and how they vary with each other. Okay, first we will come for anterior dislocation. Sounds so simple. Anterior dislocation is dislocation of the nasal septum anteriorly into the one of the nails. Yes, we can appreciate in this diagram that the nasal septum has deviated from its original position into one of the sides, that is one of the nails practically. So how to confirm this thing? During the clinical examination, when the patient comes for the OPD, by hyperextension of the neck and visualizing the nasal vestibule, we can very well appreciate this anterior dislocation that we can see the septum in one of the nails. Okay, next we go for the C-shaped deflection. Yeah. As the name suggests, the deviated nasal septum, that is the deviated part of the nasal septum will be in C shaped. Okay, so we can see in this diagram how the nasal septum has been deviated in the C shaped manner. Okay, what may be the importance of this? Yes, it is deviated only to the one side of the nasal vestibule so that there will be compensatory hypertrophy of the middle turbinate on the concave part of the deviated part of the nasal septum. So, as in this diagram, we can appreciate that there is hypertrophy of the middle terminate has taken place. Okay, next coming for the S-shaped deviated nasal septum. Yes, as the name suggests again, it is deviated in the S-shaped manner. So, importance of this is, as it is deviated in the S-shaped manner, it obstructs both the nasal vestibules. But it, that is, both the nares, it obstructs and causes the obstruction of the areas. And the nasal spur, yes, everything, everyone has been astonished at what exactly the spur means. Let me explain you, let me be clear that spur is a shelf-like projection as we can see in this diagram between the bony and cartilaginous part of the nasal septum, just like a shelf which is there in the house and other areas. So, what exactly this causes, what exactly problems which are caused by the nasal spur, that is, it compresses on the lateral wall of the nose causing headache to us and also it compresses on the vessels which are present over there which causes its rupture leading to epistaxis which is of very vital importance when it comes for anatomy of the nose. 
last but not the least thickening of the nasal septum. This is not seen in most of the cases but this exists as a complication of hematoma of the nasal septum causing thickening of the nasal uh, septum. Okay. We have discussed about the types of nasal deviated nasal septum. Now we come across clinical features. Yeah. The thing is all the deviated nasal septums cases are not treated. They are not treated either surgically or nor conservatively. The only deviated nasal septum cases which shows the clinical features as I have mentioned here, only those cases are treated. Okay, we'll discuss one by one. Nasal obstruction, as I have discussed, C-shaped causes unilateral nasal obstruction and S-shaped causes bilateral nasal obstruction. But there is a very important thing to note when it comes for the clinical feature of DNS that is nasal obstruction. When a patient comes for the OPD with a complaint of nasal obstruction, we should not go directly into the diagnosis of deviated nasal septum. There may be other chances like one of the important chance would be nasal synecy. Yes, we have to differentiate between nasal synecy and deviated nasal septum. For this, the very important test which, has, which will be conducted is the cortical test. Let me demonstrate you what exactly is the cortical test. As we know, the nasal wall inside the nasal vestibule is there will be a nasal wall. So when we conduct the cortical test, yes, cortical test is conducted by placing our fingers on the in this part of the area that is the maxillary area and pulling it downwards. So as a result of this pulling, the nasal synecy that is the nasal wall will open up and the respiration that is breathing will increase. So this is a main test which is used to differentiate between nasal synecy and deviated nasal septum. If the breathing does not improve, then the nasal, nasal synecy can be ruled out and we can concentrate on the diagnosis of deviated nasal septum. Next headache, as I explained, the nasal spur, that is the shelf-like projection of the nasal septum, may, cause, may compress the lateral wall and may cause headache. Sinusitis, yeah, this is a very wonderful phenomenon. The deviated nasal septum blocks the ostia, so it inhibits the ventilation. To the sinuses. So this may cause sinusitis. Epistaxis I have mentioned. It compresses the vessels on its lateral part. This may lead to epistaxis. Anosmia. Yeah. By common sense we can tell that when there is obstruction for the nose the smell impulses can't reach the olfactory receptors in the upper part of the nasal cavity and there this may result with anosmia. Next middle ear infection. Yes. By analyzing the thing, we can come to the conclusion that due to pharyngotympanic tube, that is eustachian tube, the spread of infection may take place and there would be middle ear infection. External deformity. This is also a wonderful thing that if there is deviated nasal septum, why there would be the deformity or why there would be turning of the external nose? This is a very common question which arises among the students. We have to analyze it. Yes. The nasal septum which is inside the nose is that fuses with the upper lateral cartilage in the upper one third of the nose. So there will be connection between the nasal septum and the upper lateral cartilage. So if there is deviation of the nasal septum, this also results in the deviation of the external nose. And for this, for improving the memorizing skills in this concept, I want to give you a mnemonic on clinical features. Yes, we can see here. N H S E A M E, the starting letters of these clinical features. When we rearrange these letters, we can come up like this N H M E S E A. If we group like this, we come across N H M E S E, that is Naziruddin Hospital is located in the Middle East Sea. I will repeat, Naziruddin Hospital is located in the Middle East Sea. This makes your work easier to memorize the things during examinations and in the point of view of exams. So finally, coming to the treatment part. So the main treatment part for deviated nasal septum treatment is that SMR, that is submucosal resection and septoplasty. Submucosal resection was used earlier days, like now it is being getting replaced by the septoplasty. Let me tell you the reason why. Septoplasty is more like conservative treatment. It is more like conservative mode of treatment. 
where the only the small part of the nasal septum is surgically resected and the most of the nasal septum is left intact so which is very favorable in point of view of the patients but when it comes for submucous resection that is smr the most of the nasal septum is taken away so this is more likely like more likely like a surgical view of treatment but that is conservative view of treatment so because of this nowadays smr has almost completely replaced septoplasty has almost completely replaced smr so finally to conclude the topic of deviated nasal septum it is mainly caused due to it is the main cause of the nasal obstruction etiology being trauma improper development racial factors and hereditary factors and types being anterior dislocation c shape s shape nasal spur and thickening and clinical features as i said a pneumonic naziruddin hospital is located in the middle east c and finally coming to the treatment it is smr and septoplasty now what is septoplasty has completely almost completely replaced smr so thank you one and all